you're my first interview, so it's very exciting. <laughs> um, so I guess just tell us about how you got started in the industry. Dara, your I, background. look, I was one of those lucky kids that knew what I wanted to do from a really, really young age. Mm -hmm. And I had a father who was in the building industry. I had a sister who was in, who was in design, not in interiors, in fashion. And, mm -hmm. you know, my sister's a lot older than me. And so from day dot, the, from what I can always remember, there was always design magazines around. So it, it wasn't necessarily interiors, but it was fashion. So yeah. from like a very young age, I knew about design. I've got four older sisters. They all love fashion. So I had this in, I, I had this very, what's the word? I had a sense of design from a very, very young age. So then yep. probably from around the age of 10, watching film and television, and I was captivated by the set design. I knew from that age, I wanted to do interiors. So I started collecting, um, I started collecting interior design magazines. I was buying Bell and House and Guard and then Home Beautiful from a very young age. And then as a teenager, I was redecorating my parents' house. And from year seven, I started doing art and technical drawing. And then I did the same subjects for my HSC. And then from, and then after the HSC, I went straight into interiors. So I was lucky. I was lucky I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's huge. It took me a long time to work out what I wanted to do. But yeah, to have that trajectory is just, yeah, it's incredibly lucky. I was lucky. And look, I really am. I've always been like, I've always, I, I say that I was, I, I, I was actually an adult stuck in a little, in a, in a child's body because <laughs> I actually liked mixing with adults more when I was a kid and mm. I knew what, I knew what I wanted to do when I was, when I grew up and I've always been this person. So, you know, I've always been on this mission of doing this, all this crazy stuff that I'm doing. So I feel lucky. Which part of Sydney did you grow up in? I actually grew up in Bankstown. Okay. I grew up in Bankstown and my mother is still there. <laughs> and now I live in Darlinghurst. Yeah. I saw your photo with your mum. How beautiful. So beautiful. House and Garden, Australian House and House Garden. House and Garden, yes. House and Garden. Um, oh yeah, it was awesome. So my mother is still in the family home. And we did, we redid yeah. the house about maybe 15 years ago. And it was in yeah. House and Garden back then. And that room we kept intact. I really did. I, the, I tiles. Was, the tiles. I noticed the tiles. tiles. So everything. So that whole room yeah. kept in, intact. But the rest of the house has been redone. And it's all, it's all pretty light and modern now. Except for that room. Except that for that room. room. Still and got I the actually, tiles. I, yeah, yeah. Tara, I actually photographed that room for the patterned interior. Yes. I was just looking through it. Yeah. 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 I remember when we were doing Amazing. it. I was like, mum and dad, let's keep these tiles. And they were happy to keep the tiles in that room. But all, but all the all the all the seventies tiles are gone, unfortunately. Oh, I know, and I, I see people pulling them up, and it's just kind of like, no, just keep and them. I, but... Writing that book, I realised that my love of pattern um, comes from the family house because every room had a, a different pattern. Uh, even our bedrooms had pattern tiles. The bathrooms, the kitchen all the formal areas was all pattern tiles because it was built in the late seventies and they're Italian. Totally. And then it, there was wallpaper on top of pattern tiles on top of so crazy house, velvets. And so our, yeah. Actually, so the family home, we actually didn't have wallpaper funny enough. It was the tiles. Oh. Yeah. It was the tiles. Yeah, okay. We didn't have wallpaper. So my parents always preferred painted walls. So they were actually, mm. you know what? No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. That room, that room originally had wallpaper. I'm wrong. That room originally had bamboo wallpaper. And as a teenager, I hated it. <laughs> and I spent the summer of 1986 tearing all that wallpaper down. Is that hilarious? That's how driven I was as a kid. But that room- 1986, that room, so you would have been- I was 14 years old. Yeah, yeah so like you seven, because I think we're around the same, right? Yeah, wow. Yeah, I was born in 1974. So 1986, I was 14 years No, yeah. I was 12. What am I saying? Yeah, yeah, no, you, used, you would have been like you're seven. Yeah, yeah, I was 12 years old. It was the summer of 1986 and I spent the whole summer tearing down the wallpaper in that room and it was all bamboo wallpaper. <laughs> Hilarious. And then what, you painted it? And then 
And then, and then I, we painted that room pink because it was the 80s. And I was so obsessed by Memphis. I was so obsessed by Memphis design in the 80s. And that's another reason. Like that salmon pink? Or... Uh, yeah, like a salmon pink. Yeah, I love. <laughs> Amazing. And that was another reason I became an interior designer was because of Memphis design. I was obsessed by Memphis. I loved the, you know, the black and white and the teal and the pink. Yeah. Crazy. So much fun. My parents would never have let me do anything like that. Oh, ever. look, I, um, you know, <laughs> um, my parents had sort of no choice with me. No. <laughs> being the youngest, being the youngest. That's true. And when you're the youngest, you learn how to scream because you need to be heard. So they sort of had no choice. And a boy, because it was and all girls, yeah? <laughs> so they probably let you do anything anyway, because you were the boy. Look, by the, by, by the fifth kid, they were just like, do whatever you want. Do it. They were sick of it. <laughs> Do whatever you want by the fifth child. They were tired. <laughs> they were tired. My father was tired by the fifth child. And your dad was a builder? My a builder? father. So my father mm. was in the building industry. So he his trade was carpentry. Mm -hmm. His trade was carpentry. So he was a carpenter. But in the late 70s, he actually went and specialised in form work. So okay. form work. So he, he, so he, he specialised in form work. And form work is... Um, is the carpentry trade that builds the plywood mould to build concrete slabs. So from oh, a wow. very young age, I understood about concrete and about formwork, and I love concrete because it was my father's trade. Yeah. So, you know, I love using concrete. So I really understood structure and how concrete worked from a very young age because, you know, I'd go on building sites with him and I'd see what he was doing. And you, I know you've said before, like, you just grew up with blueprints around the house. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, in those there days, they weren't plans. Yeah, there were plans everywhere because my father was always pricing plans. And look, by the end of his business, I was helping him um, price plans. So I was, I, I'm actually really good at like um, numbers and costing plans and estimate estimations. Believe it or not, I got 99 yeah. in my in my um, estimation class at Interior Design School. <laughs> I did. I got 99. percent in, in, in final year. And by the end of it, I was helping yeah. him cross plans. But there was plans and blueprints everywhere back then in the house. So, you know, and, but I, and also I did, um, I, I, Dara, I did technical drawing from the age of seven. So I'm a really, really good drafter because I've been doing it all my life. That's crazy. And did you do, at school, did you do art or woodwork yeah. or? Yeah, no, no, totally. Yeah, I did art. I did art from year seven. And from year nine to year yeah. 12, I was the highest in my school. Art. Yeah, wow. Okay. Yeah, I did woodwork. I love woodwork. I did woodwork so. as well. I did woodwork as well. I yeah. did woodwork. I loved it. I did woodwork as well. Yeah, I, loved I made it. a I did ceramics. Yeah. I did ceramics. Mm. I did woodwork. Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. I loved all that stuff. I loved Lego as a kid. I still have Lego. I love buying yes. all, you know, the famous buildings Lego. Like I'm looking at my bookshelves now yeah. at the Farnsworth house. I've got the Villa Savoy, I'm build, I've got the Opera House, I'm building the Roby House at the moment at home, but I still love Lego. I'm, a, I'm an adult that still loves Lego. I loved Lego as a kid. There are a lot, <laughs> there are a lot I of know. people that still my mother, love Lego. My, my, mother bought, my mother used to buy me Lego when I was a really young child as well. I love Lego. So yeah, we, had, we had it in a big denim bag. Mm -hmm. I've always loved building things. I've always loved creating things. I used to love ceramics in the, um, in the in the art class you know i'm lucky now that i have a product business and i'm doing a lot of ceramics at the moment so i'm doing um, i'm working with these amazing ceramicists out of portugal at the moment which is really super exciting so you know hopefully maybe yeah. six months or a year it takes a while to develop a product maybe maybe six totally. maybe a year maybe a year away they might be in the store amazing and i think and 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 and, and now i'm making this full circle and I think this is where my love of, I mean, definitely, Dara, my love of tiles comes from this and it comes from the family home and the Italian heritage. So when you look into a space, I know I just, because of years, 20 years doing this, I look at the floor first. When I walk into a hotel or when I walk into anywhere, what do you look at? Yeah, I'm the same. I look at the interior architecture. I always, and you know, the first book, The Tale of Interior, the first chapter is called Interior Architecture. Actually, the mm. second one, the first one is, is, is about finding a starting point. But mm. after you've got a starting point, um, it's a, a, about the interior architecture. So I look at the floors, walls, and ceilings first. Yeah. 
and then I start honing yeah. in on joinery and then you know the furniture is done really is is done at the end the furniture and and all that sort of and I even look at color later I look but yeah definitely for the floors is the first thing I look at as well because I think okay. you've got to get your foundation right before you can yeah. do anything else totally and then what if you what if you go into somewhere like um, I know for me, I walked into the Sistine Chapel and I looked at the floor. Oh, it's if you get, <laughs> the floors are made, everyone's like looking up. No, no, I did the same. I did the same. Yeah. I, I photographed and I, and I still, and I referenced the Vatican. I, I, I photographed, yeah. I photographed the floor of the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican. It's incredible. All that, all that cubed the teeny and little, squared, yeah. but all that cubed and squared marble ever. It's incredible. I've done projects that are inspired by the Vatican. It's yeah, amazing. And it's such a beautiful old artisan thing that like, I wish we could do more of that. That would well, be, I mean, wish. look, you know, all that stuff that we're doing behind you is definitely inspired by um, totally. you know, all that era. Yeah. You'll really love what I'm working on at the moment. Um, look, we haven't put it into a range yet, but I'm working on, mm. we're doing it for custom projects and then me and Chris will turn it into a range. I'm doing a big jumbo. I'm working on a big jumbo story at the moment. So I want to blow everything up really big. So that's the next thing I'm working on. So I think we've got about maybe three or four designs um, that Amazing. I'm doing for custom projects. So, look, yeah. so a, a lot of these times, what, what, what you're seeing behind you might start with a custom project and then I've expanded into a range. But you Is know- Is that me, how you, yeah. Is that how you work on ranges? I know you're, how you started with your rug range. Well, it's a bit of both. Yeah, it's a bit of both. Yeah. A lot of, look, the DNA for everything we do is definitely the interior design studio. So the ideas mm. definitely come from that. And then we expand it into like product ranges and what you see in the shop. But yeah, definitely the DNA of everything is really the interior design studio and, you know, the projects and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. definitely. But you'll love all this new stuff I'm working on. It's really cool. So, you know, the pattern Ooh, is going to be like this big now. Amazing. I can't wait to see that. In marble or? No, yeah, it's going to be all marble. Yeah. And we're, 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 you know, we're looking at different colors and stuff again. I'm into color. So we'll do oh. some neutral, we'll do some neutral tones and we'll do some color. Um, in the new shop, I actually blew up Rabato. So the Rabato design. The square, the, yeah, the, the square, gray. I've blown it up. Yeah. I've blown it up to be really big and that'll probably become part of this range. I've blown it up. Oh, amazing. It's and so I, nice that colors come back in to fashion because there was so long that and obviously not with your clients but for us it, everything was just minimal and I don't, I don't do minimal I like lots of pattern lots of color yeah. look you know Dara I like both I like both mm. but I think that I feel that not not everything can be answered with the same look totally mm. so I look I do like both but, um, and it probably makes it harder for you because, you know, just selling a plain tile. But I, mm. I, I really feel like not everything can be answered with the same look. So I think that it's, it's added a lot of freedom to what we're doing now. And I, I, I yeah. do feel freer when we're designing that everything does not have to look the same and it's not so homogenous. And, you know, now clients are asking for different looks. And, you know, I love it. I love it that clients want to explore different colors in marbles and it's even in metal. I remember when that whole look was, everything had to be chrome. Do you remember that? Everything was only yep. chrome. So now things yep. are chrome, they're brass, they're bronze, you know, they're, they're, um, they're polished. Nickel. Brass, nickel, yep. nickel, platinum. So, you know, even even with, with, you know, with metalware and taps, we're exploring different colours, then again, ties into the bathrooms. So it is an exciting time for design. It is very much so. It's, yeah, it's fun. It's, it I feel fun. like, it really yeah. Fun. I had a full circle moment recently and we got in some tiles and they're a 20 by 20 terracotta. And when I first started, uh -huh. <laughs> when I first started, all you could get was 20 by 20 colored tiles with, and we did the freezers at the top. That was when I first started in tile industry. That's what we had. And yeah, it's, I, it's, I, I, yeah, I it's love terracotta. We did a, um, there was a house that we did in the patterned interior and the client mm. came to me and they wanted like a, um, they wanted like a Spanish mission style. Yeah. And um, all the exterior spaces were done in a hexagon. Oh, was that the hexagon? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. We did, you know, all the beams were black and um, it just evoked so much warmth. 
We've got the, are you familiar with the Gavico range? No, but after this, definitely email it to me because I love terracotta. Oh, these guys, they take, I think it's in Croatia and they take all the roof tiles off all the 150 year old buildings, clean them up and cut them down and yeah, and then sell them. They're these beautiful terracottas that go from light to dark and you can do all different sizes. It's so sustainable as well. It's just beautiful. And you can feel like with anything, I find if you go into the old buildings, you can feel the history, you can feel the energy. Well, all those, but you know, all those materials, like all those natural materials have so much depth and Mm. those materials just don't date. No, you don't, and you don't get that with a porcelain tile. Like it's not, you've got to, you can feel the history in it. Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I can see where you're coming from. I know, I love it. I love yep. it. I love mm. it. And it does, yeah, it's classic. It just doesn't date. Yeah. And I think that's what you get with marble. Totally, yeah. Mm. Um, I know you've referenced The Shining as one of your... That was another reason I became an interior designer. Yeah. <laughs> Your favourite movie. What other favourite movie set, like, designs? Look, um, um, Tanya from House and Garden always has a chuckle of this. Mm. Look, you know, growing up with four sisters, and it was the 80s, we, we watched Dynasty, and mm-hmm. the original Dynasty had the most amazing sets, and Alexis's office blew, um, blew me away. It was, yeah. it was all beige, and it was really clean and architectural, and then there was this big hero desk in Tusks. So that was... That was another. Amazing. It was amazing, <laughs> and it's still amazing. The other one is Space Odyssey. The Space Odyssey oh. sets blew me away. You know the French. You know the French. Um, you know the the scene with the French set with the illuminated floors. That that yeah. was another one that blew me away. I think that's where my love of panelling comes from. Yeah, that yeah, Kubrick. Did, yeah, amazing. His oh, stuff. Kubrick was incredible. Kubrick was incredible. But yeah, don't, you know the shining carpet is is another reason I became an interior designer. And, you know, it's another reason where my love of pattern comes from. And there yeah, was, and I did, look, actually, mm. Dara, I did a 10th anniversary New Regency collection for designer rugs. And there is a rug mm-hmm. where I really, I reinvented the shining carpet. It's called Oxford. And I reinvented the shining okay. carpet. It, it, I think if you look at it, you'll be able to see the reference. The reference is very subtle. And, you know, look, yeah. when, I, um, you know, when I'm inspired by something, you know, I like to reinvent it and, and it's more of an appropriation. You know, I don't like yeah. copying things. I don't think you can copy things. But, you know, we're all inspired. We're all inspired by stuff. But Absolutely. there is a rug called mm. Oxford that's inspired by the shining carpet. Okay. Fun. Is it the same sort of colours? Because that's no, the, what was that, like all. a mustard and a red. Not at all. Not at all. I brought <laughs> the tail down. It's not. It's a, it's 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 a lot more. Look, there is mustard in there, but it's a lot more neutral. And I brought the scale down mm-hmm. a bit. And there's a lot more. And there's a lot okay. more like finer lines in it. Okay. Um. And any other movies? I mean, Baz Luhrmann's films are always incredible. Oh, they are. They are. Oh, my God. You know, he, I mean, amazing, amazing. There was another movie that I really loved that you'll probably have a little chuckle about in the 80s. It was, um, what was it called again? Oh, God, I can't remember, Dara. It'll come to me. Um, it's an 80s movie, and all the sets were so memphis And that was another reason that I, I became an interior designer. I can't think of it. It'll come to me. Okay. <laughs> But I watch, I mean, James Bond movies as well. I mean, I watch like all those James Bond movies as a kid blew me away. I still watch James Bond movies to be inspired. Moonraker has the most amazing sets in there. That was when, that was in the late 70s. I love the late 70s because the late 70s are my first memories because I was born in 1970. So I'm obsessed by the late 70s. Um, the Moonraker yeah. sets are incredible. And also the Sean Connery sets from the 60s are incredible. It's all, yeah. Uh, I just, yeah, I, I, that would have been my other job. I would have loved to have been set designer because you can you know do was, all that. You know what was so funny? Um, I didn't even think to become a set designer. Because I, I have been, I've been asked that question, did you think to become a set designer? I didn't even think to become a set designer. I always wanted to be an interior designer. And I think maybe that's why my um, interiors do have a lot of drama and I do love drama in my interiors. How come bathrooms aren't photographed as much as all the living areas? <laughs> I think it's probably, um, they're harder to photograph. 
I mean, we always, okay. I think they're just harder to photograph because they're smaller yeah. spaces. Um, look, in Melbourne, we're luckier because um, usually the properties are bigger and we can have yeah. bathrooms. Look, mm. we always photograph the bathrooms when we're doing our projects because there's always, there's always bathrooms. Yeah. I just think that they're harder to photograph. But in our projects, we always photograph the bathrooms. Okay. Like, I guess because they're smaller, aren't they? They're not smaller. Just... They're, they're just harder to photograph. But our projects will always have um, bathrooms in there because the type yeah. of projects we do now is that we do a whole, you know, we do the whole house, a whole apartment. So there's always yeah. a kitchen, there's always a bathroom. And I guess you've always been really good with the photography of yes. getting everything done, which is very important. Um, yes. How did you feel getting your first ma one in a magazine? Oh, look, I always, look, even today, even today yeah. I get, I love it. I run to the new, I run to the, even today after all these years, I run to the news agency when the mm. magazine's out and I open it up in front of the like sales assistant. I did it the other You're day. Like I'm, you know, with the Mother's Day thing. Look, I loved it. I loved it. For me, a project is finished when I've frozen it in time. And I love, as part it's of everything I do, yeah. I really love creating the image. Yep. I love creating the photographer and I'm behind the camera with the photographer. I've been using the amazing Aunt Anson Smart for about 15 years. You know, we have a really good synergy. I like his style. It's very clean. But, you know, for me, the project is finished when I've frozen it in time. And I really love creating the image. That's it's just such a beautiful way, yeah, to finish it as well, to finish a project. Is to, do you style everything yourself as well? Yeah. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. yeah, we do. I, um, my, my, myself and my team do all the styling. I'm lucky now that I have a product business. So, you know, mm. I have, I have heaps of accessories. Yeah. But yeah, we, we, we style all our own projects and like every, every, every image you see in the pattern interior and, and anything on the website, you know, I've touched and I've moved the accessories and there's always my hands that have been there, but yeah, we do all the styling ourselves. Yeah, wow. But I don't know. For me, I think that's real design. Well, it's kind of the end, isn't it? It's, it's the, the end. It's, it's the end. I love it. I love. I love that. I love that phase. I mean, you know, I love the. You know, again, we're coming full circle. You know, did you ask me? Um, do you look at the floor? Yeah, I do look at the floor first. But for me, all the projects you see, we've done the interior architecture. So yep. you know, we've looked at the foundation, and then we've looked at all the joinery and um, all the um, furniture. And then it's mm -hmm. that final, it's that final finishing layer. I love doing that final finishing layer. I love doing yeah. all the accessories and the books and the flowers. Yeah, fun. And also, and then I guess you get the added bonus of they're your accessories that you've designed. So you just get, yeah, it's it's a beautiful story to tell. Yeah. Look, I, look, I'm lucky now that I, as I said, I do have the product business and I can put all my beautiful accessories in there. Yeah. What do you think the future of print magazines and things like that's going to, how do you think that's going to impact the industry? Look, I think that there's, I think that it's actually the interior design magazines because they're niche. I think that's the, the design magazines are the ones that will, will last. I think that. Over fashion or? Well, no, I think fashion, there'll be fashion magazines. Yeah. But I think that it's, my personal opinion is, I don't think that there'll be newspapers and rags and stuff in the future because it'll all go online. Mm. But I think that the niche magazines will last because they've always been niche magazines and I think it, it'll be anything niche that lasts in print. And people keep the magazines. Yeah, I keep the magazines. I love the magazines. Yeah, I've got a look, collection. I do, mm. Yeah, I look, I do, um, I do, look, you know, I, still, I, you know I, I, I have subscriptions to print magazines and I, and I look at it on my iPad and I love my iPad and, you know, I do all my reading on the iPad and look, to be totally honest, I don't buy novels anymore. I download them on my iPad. Same. Yep. I don't buy it. Cause you know, it's just a waste of, it's just a waste of paper and space. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you know, no, I still buy print magazines. Look, and I don't buy as many fashion magazines anymore because there is, there is stuff, but you know, there, you, you, you can't, you, you can't um, download it, but I still buy some fashion ma men's magazines cause I love fashion. Yep. But I still buy all the all the all the print magazines. Who's your favourite fashion designer? Look, um, I've got a few. Living right now, I, do, I I love Eddie Slamane. Yep. Eddie Slamane, you know, was um at, at Dior, then he went to Saint Laurent. Now he's at Celine. Mm. Um, you know, who, um, who's not living? Halston. Halston. Yep. 
from the 1970s. Halston was the first designer. I love his style, believe it or not. It was super clean. Halston mm -hmm. was the first designer to really, the first modern designer, well, one of the first modern designers to really mm -hmm. um, invent that whole licensing and, um, you know, um, pret a porte model. And yeah. I just love his style. Gianni Versace. Mm -hmm. uh, the poor man's not living anymore. And look no. what I'm wearing for you today. I saw uh, that. <laughs> I'm wearing for you today. And yeah. look, um, in the early 90s, I was blown away by his use of pattern. And I'm so happy now that um, Donatella's finally fa um, found her voice. And she's able, to, she was, she's able to reinvent the brand and go into the heritage of that brand. Oh, when they did this year, last year with JLo, with the reprint oh, of the palm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, amazing. And look, a few years ago, she did a tribute collection mm. and it was the 20th anniversary of Gianni Versace's death. And I think now because that heritage, that brand has so much heritage and history, she's able now to go into the archive. Yep. And it's got a really rich archive. Oh, incredible. I would love to go into the archives that they use for the Met Gala. Oh, yeah. amazing. Amazing. And look, you know, the sad thing, um, and you should watch it. There's a new documentary on Halston. I was going to suggest thing, that. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. So watch it. Mm. The sad thing about that brand, Dara, is that the company that bought him out sold his archive. So there's no archive there anymore. So it's really hard for a designer to reinvent that brand. The archive is, is gone. So, you know, there's been so... And the, they're about, there's a new designer there and, um, he's gonna, and, he's, and I think he's launching his, new, his next collection soon. Mm. So when you watch that movie you understand why it's so hard for any designer to try and reinvent that brand. There's no archive where Donatella would have her brother's archive there. And even, and even all those, you know, you know, all the big houses like, you know, Saint Laurent and um, Christian Dior, they mm. all have an archive there. So a, a young designer can go in there and reinvent um, the brand. It's like when in Dior and I, when Raph Simons went you know, into the archive. You know, I've never seen that movie. Oh, you have to see I need it. to watch it. Everyone talks about it. I, I, it, I actually, I think it's the same director. It's the same director that made Dior and I has made the Halston movie. Well, yeah, he goes into the archives, and then yeah, and the, the his first showing is just amazing. Like it's just yeah, you should watch it. Yeah, no, I should watch it. And look, I love, and you know, with our work, I love referencing history. Mm. Um, I think it's I, I do love referencing history. I, I'm always thinking in the now, and I do want to be modern, but I do love referencing history. I think it's important. I think I it's think very it's important. important. I think it's yeah. important to know your history, to know your design history, and not only architects, interior design, fashion, furniture, everything. I think you Absolutely. need to know. I think you need to know about the past to be able to move into the future. But you've got to live in the present, though. Absolutely, and I think fashion and interiors collide. Totally, of course they do. And if you look at fashion designers now, the great fashion designers like Halston and Johnny Versace and Ralph Lauren they were able to turn their brand into a lifestyle brand and turn their mm. whole thing into interiors. It's, 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 it's incredible what they did. Yeah. The Ralph Lauren, I remember when I went into the one in LA on, in Rodeo Drive, like that's, that shop's amazing. Like the Amazing, amazing that yeah. he, he turned, and look, I've got a lot of clients that love Ralph Lauren and we use a lot of Ralph Lauren furniture and, mm. um, you know, he's, you know, he's another genius that was able to turn his whole look into a lifestyle brand. And he started with ties or something, like just crazy. I know, because he loved, he loved the way, because he, he was dressing, he was dressing in that very um, New, New England look and pulling things from vintage stores. And yeah, he started designing ties. Halston, funny enough, he started mm. with hats. So he designed Jackie Ho's, Jackie O, or Jackie Kennedy, Jackie Onassis or Jackie Kennedy, yeah. the famous pillbox hat. Wow. Yeah, so he was a milliner and then he went into fashion. Amazing. Mm. There's a really good, there's a couple of um, Yves Saint Laurent um, movies, a documentary and a movie as well. Another genius, another yeah. genius, another genius. Because he was, he was the first couturier to go into ready to wear. And, mm. and he went into licensing and, you know, he became a whole um, lifestyle brand as well. Mm, Pierre Cardin is another design genius like all his furniture from the 60s and 70s. Oh, yeah. Divine. Um, so how do you think all this is going to play out with the pandemic? Of How do you think that's going to actually affect design moving forward? 
I don't know. It's so hard, Dara, because we're, we're 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 in the middle of the um, we're sort of in the middle of it all at the moment. Look, I, 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 I'm hopeful. I have a hopeful. I'm, I've got a hopeful personality. I hope that um, things will bounce back. I, I, I hope that things will bounce back. Um, I don't know yet. I really don't know. I hope things will bounce back. I think they will too. I think, I yeah. think home offices are going to be a lot more lux, hopefully. Like people will <laughs> uh, be working I, I, from I, home. I, no, I've actually become one of those people. I've realised from this whole period of this whole thing is, I hate, I hate working from home. I want my yeah. whole team back. I want my whole team back with me. Yeah. Look, look, through this whole thing, I've realised that there is some, you know, there is some, um, there is some things that, that, that can be done at home. Mm. That can be done at home. You know, the drafting can be done at home easily. You know, the PR and marketing can be done at home. You know, maybe that's something that can be done at home more easily. But, you know, when I'm, you know, when I'm concepting, um, projects and I'm picking fabrics and tiles, you know, I do need the designers with me because it's a very collaborative thing, but you know, I just can't wait for my whole team to be back with me, Dara. Yeah. Them. We, yeah, it's, um, yeah, that's the same. You miss, you just miss interactions with people. I think. Collaborative. You know what I, yeah. I like, I'm the way I work. I'm a very collaborative person. You know, I love, mm. you know, I love collaborating with my clients and the, and the designers, and even with you guys, you yeah. guys love collaborating with you guys. I remember uh, when you probably don't remember this, but I remember when I was working in Sydney. I was working at WK, and one of the girls from your office emailed me, and I was so excited to come into your office. I remember and, when you first came into the office. I yeah, and I was so nervous, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" And then you walked up, introduced yourself, and you actually asked my opinion on something, and I was just like, "Oh." That's so nice. Like not a lot of people would do that. And you were like, what do you think? And I was like, well, okay. It was just, yeah, it was just lovely. Look for me, I, um, I'm very collaborative. Um, Mm. I like, I think a a, a good designer understands what's going on in the zeitgeist. They understand what's going on out there and what's happening globally. And I think you've still got to have your own DNA and you can always mm. see the DNA in, you can always see our DNA in all the projects we do, but I like to understand what's going on in, the, what's happening in the zeitgeist and what's happening in the universe and the world and, you know, what everyone's thinking and what you're thinking and what everyone's thinking on the street. I think it's important. I think it's important. Look, I'm, look for me, every time I start a new project, my client or the house is the new, what's that, what's that, what, uh, muse is the new muse. Ah, uh, yep. It's yep. definitely the new muse. My client becomes the new muse or the house becomes the new muse. Who's your dream client? Whose house Madonna. would you like to Madonna. Oh, Madonna. That would be amazing. She'd be amazing to work for. Madonna. <laughs> she'd probably be a bit, she should be a hard taskmaster though. But she'd that's all right. Be... No. That's yeah. all right. I mean, you know, that's why she's so super successful because she's so focused. Totally. But I think, I think, I think Madonna would have amazing taste. I think so too. And you could really go back to the eighties and stuff with her. She'd reference. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and what about like a restaurant or something? Look, you... we were doing, we're actually, look, it's on hold. We're, we've actually started doing a lot more hospitality lately, which is exciting. We just mm. finished, and, th- and that's the project you helped us on. Um, we mm-hmm. just finished the new restaurant out of Cotton On in, um, yep. in Geelong. Yep. And um, they have built the most amazing campus out there. And we're lucky enough to work with Cotton On. And we've just, and also as part of the restaurant, we've also done the um, the front of house meeting rooms and reception. And they've mm-hmm. actually taken more of a, very more of an open approach where, where the meeting areas and the meeting rooms are a lot more open. So it's like all these pods everywhere. It's a bit more hotel-like. Yep. It's a bit more hotel-like. And they encourage, they encourage the teams to have booking meetings in all the different pods in, um, in, the, in the reception. Wow. It feels more like a hotel. It's really exciting. And, um, and we, were, we, were, we, were, we were working on a really beautiful restaurant in Brisbane that's unfortunately gone on hold. So hopefully that'll come on. That'll, that'll come back. But I do love doing restaurants and hospitality. But we, are, we probably are more of a residential firm. But we do. We, we, always, have, we always have commercial work on. I'm actually, Jara, I'm actually trained as a commercial designer. Honey. Yeah, well, I love doing restaurants because it's kind of a bit more anything can go. Like yeah. people are a bit more adventurous than with their homes. Look, I'm um, lucky with my clients. Everyone says I yeah. get away with murder. I'm lucky <laughs> with my clients. 
I um I do get that client that comes to me that wants something different. Yeah. They want something different and they want to explore color and pattern and different metals and stuff. So um I probably one of more the lucky ones when it comes to residential design. Okay. But I do love doing restaurants. I love restaurants. I do love restaurants. You know, for me a restaurant always has to have a great chair and I love exploring chair design in restaurants. Yes. I miss restaurants. I miss going to restaurants. Oh, so do I. I, <laughs> I, I, I always say to my, I say to Jason, my partner, as soon as this thing's over, we're going to our favorite restaurant. But um, yeah, I do love, I do love restaurants because, you know, even with, the, even with the, with the restaurant at Cotton On, we designed our own custom chair. And I think that's what's exciting about restaurants. Well, and it, like a good restaurant should be an experience. Totally, it's an experience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, so I've it's experience. and the design's part of it. It's um, yeah. yeah, I love yeah. creating the mood and even and look, that's what I do with the residential work. Mm. You know, the residential projects always have a lot of mood and it's and 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 that's and and that goes with creating the drama in the space. And you know, restaurants have mood. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, how do you look after your wellness? I know you work a lot and you're twenty four seven, but <laughs> how do you look after health and things like that how do you look i don't look i don't work out i used to i I worked out for about 10 years and then my retire and then my trainer um stopped training and then i stopped training look i eat really clean Mm -hmm. i i i I eat really healthy i i I eat really clean um before this before this whole thing happened i wasn't (laughs) drinking much wine but i have been drinking more wine like everyone everyone's been drinking more wine but look, that's how I look after my wellness. I eat really clean. I, I eat really super healthy. Mm. Uh, I don't eat a lot of carbs anymore. I know that's a cliche. Um, you know, I really control, I love sugar, but I control the sugar. And, yeah. um, you know, I look, I do love work. So work for me is a hobby. Yeah. Do you but switch I, I, off or? Not really, not really, Dara. I don't know. I find I have that personality that doesn't really need to switch off. I really do love what I do. I love for me, I'm lucky that I get to do my hobby. I don't really switch off. No, I don't. I'm I'm 24 yeah. seven. I don't really switch off. Yeah. But, you know, I don't have kids, so I can go home and put my feet up and watch TV and just turn my laptop on and catch up on stuff. And you know, on the weekends, yeah. you know, I get away and I see my mother. And I love going to the family home. I do love going to the family home and spending time there because I can really switch yeah. off when I'm there because I'm away and you know the house is big and all that sort of stuff. Smart. And what, like, what are you watching on TV? What are you binging? Do you know what I've started binging on is Masterclass. So I just finished the Anna Wintour Class. one. Yes, Anna Wintour is amazing. <laughs> so did I. So I've started watching Masterclass. It's amazing. Okay. So I've watched Anna Winter. I've watched Dan von Fustenberg. I'm watching Kelly at the moment. Um, but I've started, I've, I'm binging on Masterclass. I think everyone is. And I think that video with this whole thing, and even what we're doing, I think video is, yeah. Yeah, I think so. The, the whole thing that we're doing. I think everyone wants to see yeah. video now and all this interaction because, you know, we can't, we can't see people or because of, because of ISO. But yeah, you have to change masterclass. Oh, but that Anna Winter one was amazing. Anna Winter was amazing. <laughs> I love the way she rounds everything off and, and you understand yeah. what she does because there's always a reason behind it. She's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I love all her lessons on leadership. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. So I think I, just, I might watch the Diane one next. The Diane, then... Diane's amazing. Kelly's great as well. Yeah, because you, you see her 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 process. Yeah, I can't wait. Apparently, the Bob Iger one's really good. The the Disney. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I'll watch that one next. Yeah. Awesome. But uh, I've, but um, because if you if your TV has Apple TV. Mm-hmm. Then you can yep. have, you can have the app on your TV. Yeah, that's what I've been watching it on. Yeah, I kind of also, stick I watch watching on. Netflix. Yeah, I also I know I also watch it on the iPad because okay. I love that. I because my because the iPad now for me has become like my newspaper. So you know I mm. subscribe to the Sydney Morning Herald and I read my news on it and you know I read AD America on it and I watch Masterclass on it and I watch Netflix on it. So the so my iPads become like my newspaper now, and I well, I, d- I download novels. Yeah, I, I read novels in iPad. I don't read them in a book anymore. Uh, do you know what? You know the next thing I want to download is um, Malcolm Turnbull's um, biography. 
the the memoir he's written. That sounds yeah. really juicy. It does sound juicy, doesn't it? Yeah, it sounds juicy. And look, I'm glad that finally he's able to find a voice. Yeah. I just finished the Alicia Keys um, biography. I love her. Love her book her. is amazing. Yeah, I love Alicia Keys. Yeah, yeah love her. her book is insane. Yeah, it was so good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I look and on on on, and a lot of movies I watch are probably documentaries. Mm -hmm. So I've watched. Um, you know, I love the late seventies. So on on iTunes, you can buy the Halston movie. There's a new movie on Studio 54. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a couple of years old, and this is in Ian Schrager's word, who was the owner. Mm -hmm. um, so I do like watching a lot of documentaries. Okay. That's good. I'm going to definitely, the Holston one's been on my list, so I'm going to, I might it's watch quite it. Sad. It's quite sad when you see the, the or his tapes and or his tapes being deleted because he, he, he also loved, he, for, for him, it was also about creating that image. He loved creating the image and he loved, he created a lot of video, but anyway, or he, his archive was wiped and sold, which is very sad. That's very sad. Have you seen A Single Man? Oh yeah, amazing. Tom Ford is a, look, actually, uh, look, another, I, um, another favorite. I should have, I, I forgot about Tom. I love Tom Ford. Tom Ford, I love, so Tom Ford is trained as an architect. That's why his clothes, yeah, his clothes are very architectural. He's trained as an yeah. architect. And also his interiors are amazing. What he did at Gucci and Saint Laurent and the Tom yeah. Ford stores in his houses. I'm very inspired by Tom Ford and his interiors. Oh, yeah. That single man, because that's a lot in a house. Yeah, amazing. The sets on there are amazing. You know what the rumour is last year he bought Halston's townhouse. I read that. Yeah. Uh, it'd be amazing if he turns it back. Yeah. If he turns it back to, um, to Halston's uh, favourite shade of grey. Because the whole house is grey, and his whole philosophy is that everyone looks good in grey. So my my love of grey actually comes from that. So the shop, the new shop, is all grey because everyone looks good in grey and everything looks good on grey. So the new shop is incredibly neutral. Oh, I I do a once I can travel again, I can come up and have a look. Well, when you come up, <laughs> I'll meet you at the shop. Okay, you're on. Um, awesome. Thank you so much for your time. No pleasure, pleasure, Dara. It was great fun. To see you finally. Yeah. <laughs>